Hello friends, so my name is Santanu Das and today I came up with another interesting topic in astronomy. So if you look at the night sky then you will see that the stars are scattered all around the night sky randomly. So since the ancient time people tried to group the stars into clusters and then imagine those clusters as some objects or human or some animals etc. For example there is a constellation called Orion which represents a hunter. In Bengali it is known as Kalpurus constellation. Similarly, there is another constellation called Arsa Major, which represents a great bear. Similarly, there are constellations uh, called Cassiopeia, which is the mother of Andromeda. There is a constellation called Cygnus, which is imagined as a swan. There is, uh, there is a constellation called Taurus, which is imagined as a bull, etc. These constellations are known since very ancient times. Ptolemy in his book listed total 48 constellations. Presently, there are total 88 internationally recognized constellations in our night sky. These constellations actually help us in remembering the stars. However, they don't have any real astronomical significance. For doing some astronomy, we need to list the stars' positions and we need to know their brightness. And in this way, we have to list those stars into a catalog. The first such known catalog was made by Greek astronomer Hipparchus in about 160 BC to 130 BC. Then after 300 years, Ptolemy added few more stars with that catalog and then he published this catalog in his work Almagest in about 150 AD. In Ptolemy's work, he listed 1028 stars. When Hipparchus created the catalog, he divided the stars into six magnitude classes. The first magnitude class consists of all the brightest stars and the sixth magnitude class consists of the faintest stars in the night sky as observed from, uh, by human eye. So fast forwarding the story, when in early 19th century instruments became available to measure the exact brightness of different stars, it became clear that the, in Hipparchus's magnitude system, the stars in a particular class are about 2.5 times brighter than the stars in the next magnitude class. That means uh, the stars in the first magnitude classes were around 2.5 times brighter than the stars in the second magnitude classes. Similarly, stars in the second magnitude class are around, uh, means are on average 2.5 times brighter than the uh, stars in the third magnitude classes and so on. And the, and the stars in the first magnitude class are around 100 times brighter than the stars in the sixth magnitude classes. So in 1854, astronomer Norman Poxon, who was working in Madras Observatory in India, he tried to put this uh, magnitude system in, in a quantitative basis. He defined that if the magnitude difference between two stars are exactly 5, then their brightness difference should be 100. That means if the magnitude difference is 1, then their brightness difference should be 5th root of 100, that is 2.512. So in this new magnitude calculation, the magnitude does not have to be integers, it can be any real numbers and it can also be negative numbers. So the, now we have the scale for the magnitude measurements, but uh, we need to have some reference points uh, uh, based, on, uh, based on which we can uh, classify all, all the others, no, we can measure the magnitude of all the other stars. Poxon actually defined Polaris as the reference point for its magnitude system. However, later it was found that Polaris has is a variable star. That means uh, its uh, brightness changes over time. So later Vega, uh, uh, Vega is defined as the reference of this magnitude uh, system. So uh, Vega's magnitude is zero. So here I have shown the magnitudes of some of the known uh, celestial objects in our sky. The brightest object in our sky is the sun, of course. So it has a bright, uh, it has a magnitude around minus 27, uh, 26.7. The next brightest object in our sky, or the brightest object in our night sky, is the moon. It has a, uh, a magnitude minus 12.6. So uh, means moon is around 14.1 uh, one magnitude higher than sun. 
This also says that sun is about uh, 2.512 to the power 14.1 that is 440,000 times brighter than full moon. The planet Venus which is also known as the uh, morning star or the evening star uh, it has a brightness of about minus 4.4. Uh, the brightest star in our night sky is Sirius which has a brightness minus 1.5. Uh, the star Vega is as I said that Vega is defined as the reference point so Vega has a brightness 0. Most of the objects in our night sky uh, that, uh, that we can see without any telescope etc. they have a brightness between 0 to 6. Uh, if we use a 150 millimeter telescope then we can observe brightness up to 30. Using Hubble Space Telescope we can observe the stars with magnitude 31.5. So you know that if you if you increase the magnitude the stars become fainter. Here I should also point out that the uh, Pluto the 10th planet or presently which is say dwarf planet has a magnitude 15.1 here I should also tell you that the magnitude of, a, of an object is uh, uh, higher do, uh, does not mean that the object itself is uh, fainter it can be the, a, 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 a faint object which is close to earth may appear much more brighter than a really bright object which is far away from earth for example moon is very very close to earth so it it does not even have its own light so, but it still appears um, the brightest object in our night sky but the stars which are far far away from us uh, they have their own light but they actually appear uh, much more fainter and therefore their magnitude is much higher in in this magnitude scale so astronomers instead of saying uh, magnitudes uh, generally call it apparent magnitude of a star so thank you for watching this video please do like the video and if you have any questions then please write them down in the comment section below i can answer those questions also if you uh, if you have not already subscribed to this channel then please do subscribe to this channel there is a new social networking website macprincipal.com uh, there you can find lots of interesting scientific articles in fact you can uh, miss, learn about all the discoveries what are happening across different uh, universities in the world uh, also you can, if you are a researcher then you can write about your own research on macpencil.com or if you are a, if you have some other talent like if you are a photographer then you can share your photos with people in macpencil.com so please visit macpencil.com and thank you